behind the band where Rick, Sean, and I talk about everything and nothing, but try to keep it on topic to cigars. So as always, if you have questions, comments, or concerns as we are going through this, please feel free to submit a question. And um, if we don't get to it tonight, we will certainly look over it and try to make sure that we get to it at some point. So tonight's theme is going to be cigars and pop culture. And we were actually just talking about that newest episode of uh, The Boys. So I have not really gotten too far into it, but I have gotten a lot of notifications this past week about the Macanudo Inspirato Orange being prominently displayed in the episode. And that just pleases me. That's the reason I'm wearing my uh, orange, orange shirt. shirt. Yeah, oh, yeah, I'm sure. I don't I'm know sure. why I picked this <laughs> shirt to wear tonight. <laughs> because but. you want to look like a creamsicle. Yeah, I do. No, right? it was I'm, perfectly I'm, appropriate. Fact, I'm wearing white shorts. <laughs> okay, thanks. That that is Perfect. a creamsicle. Yes. So, <laughs> thank God my zipper was up. Mr. Ice Cream Man. <laughs> Uh, All right. I, 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 it look, it gave, looks I nice. Gave you the Master P, uh, the Master P sound. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say it to the audience, though. Yeah. All right. So before we kick off here, what are you guys smoking? So I am actually smoking, which is probably just, I thought about it, like the worst marketing in the world. It's a cigar that people can't have. It's actually a test blend. <laughs> Fair enough. No, that's great. I, I want one. Yes. I'm uh, smoking a Zocalo. Zocalo. Yeah. What about you, Laurel? The alarm. What is it? Smoke the alarm went off. Yeah, I set off my smoke detector, so I yeah. had to mute it for a second so you guys can hear it. That's why I was like pointing up. <laughs> uh, yeah. um, I'm smoking. All the wild. I have like like Where? I have a, a fight going on between like birds or something. It's kind oh of no. Yeah. I'm smoking a, uh, a Macanudo Gold, so I've got this cool. episode, and then I have, um, I'm on a podcast tonight about a half an hour after we're done, so I needed something that hopefully I could milk for both episodes, because I'm a pretty slow mm -hmm. smoker, so I have right. a lot of confidence so that the, I can. The, the Great Lakes Smoke Show, right? Mm -hmm. right. Yep, so um, based out of the Chicagoland Thanks area. And uh, I actually met the, ju the, the dude who runs it at a barbecue. <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of funny, but I will be um, doing that later. So, um, and Rick, what did you say you were smoking? I missed that. The uh, Zocalo. Mm, Zocalo. The Zocalo. Yeah, so uh, we're going to introduce this uh, to the market next year. And so uh, I'm going to go to the factory. Hey guys, I'm going to the factory and I think in, uh, uh, December, the first week, and we're oh, going really? to finally, yeah, we're going to finalize the blends uh, for 2021, and Zocalo is on the uh, the uh, uh, the market in 2021. So uh, other sizes. So I'm just smoking the uh, uh, six by sixty right now. And it's the, the same uh, blend as the one that has already is, been released. It is. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so okay. uh, the only complaints that we received about that cigar was the size because we introduced one size to test it on the market. It was a six by 60 and yeah. a lot of guys were saying, I'm sure the fans of six by 60 are going to love that cigar, but I'm more of a fan of this size. So mm -hmm. we're going to do, uh, I think, uh, four sizes of this uh, line. Nice. Honestly, that yeah. was my biggest grievance too. It was a great cigar, but I am not a 60 smoker. Yeah, I agree. So I, I agree. wouldn't be yeah. inclined to pick one up yeah. simply because yeah. of the ring gauge. Yeah. 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 You know what yeah. I just smoked the other day that was amazing? And I know why, because we've had this conversation, but mm -hmm. the CAO TAA exclusive for this year. Oh yeah, that's amazing. Great yeah. cigar. Really cigar. That's a great cigar, and uh, you know, off air, we'll talk about the blend. But uh, the blend because well, of the situation, yeah, yeah, the situation, yeah, yeah the situation. We, we presented that opportunity, and they wanted the cigar in three months. So they said to us, "Pick any blend that you have in General Cigar. We are, are cool with that." And so I picked the blend that is off the market, but was one of my favorite cigars of all time. I, I you know, I feel like I'm talking to uh, Jonathan because when Jonathan. I talk to Jonathan, Perfect. every time there's birds and I can hear your birds now. Uh, well, that's Sean. my birds, but her alarm yeah. is probably going off, right? Yeah, that's your birds. No, no, no. She's muted. Oh, yeah. 
Again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how, Again. It's how, very how disappointing. You, how do you stop that? Have your uh, that husband just uh, fan, just take, yeah, I mean, take a Rick, fan, Rick, this do is something. Not my, this is not my first rodeo, okay? Yeah. It's not like I'm not taking precautions in the house. I mean, I have this like He's... two-way fan back here. All the windows yeah. are open, but it's whatever. Well, he needs to stand there and fan it so it doesn't go off. He's only <laughs> making martinis for you guys. He just, he just sprayed the, the water bottle up. <laughs> no, you, hey, you need, you, need, you need to go old school and get one of those box fans, man. Remember those old box fans? Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Hey, Sean, smoke. I'll tell you what. If you're so concerned, how about you send me the Cohiba Rabbit Air? We have a Cohiba rabbit air? Uh, you did. You did. <laughs> we don't have any more because I tried to steal the last one. <laughs> I can I can get it. I, t- I, t- I, t- I, t- I tell you what, Laurel, I'll trade you a Cohiba rabbit air for mm-hmm. uh, 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 a Mac and A baby box. squirrel. A baby squirrel oh my that God, you Rick. raised. For, for a Mac and Noodle what, Sean? Fire pit. Done. Oh yes, I want one of those too, girl. What are you gonna give me, Rick? Uh, a the bike. Uh, table. No, the table. bike. The beach cruiser. Oh, the bike. Wow, well, oh, the I'll bike take the is beach hard. To... No, it's, I'm sure you would, but it's hard to get that. I mm. have one in my garage right now. Well, we don't have that many fire pits left, so. <laughs> I mean, if you want to play the game. <laughs> one box fan, one fire pit. Um, okay, we have one question here before we get started. Um, mm-hmm. Oh, this question is for me. How does it work for you when smoking a cigar on the occasion of a friend's gathering? Smoking cigars by women is a little strange. Um, I mean, I smoke with anybody in my friend group, with friends, family. I mean, if at this point, I don't think smoking, like women smoking cigars is as odd as maybe it. No. Women is a little strange. Not at all. No, no I mean, not at all. It's very much a growing segment. And I guess if my opinion would be that if I'm in a group of people that aren't happy about it or think it's strange, then they can, you're in find, a long group. They can find the door. Yeah, you're in so the long my group. question to you, Laurel, is, if you look at your friend, the group of friends, is it 70% of your uh, friends smoke cigars or 30% or 80%? What do you think? Because uh, I would... I would say that 80% of my friends are regular right. cigar smokers. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And I, agree. I would say that the other 20, the other 10% are occasional cigar smokers, like given the situation, like if we're smoking cigars and they come over or we bring right. it to like a barbecue or something. Um, and then the other 10%. I wouldn't say Just, identify as a cigar smoker or not, but wouldn't be opposed to trying it at some point. No, I have a, a lot of uh, people in our maybe 10 to 15 percent. Well, well, my wife, my daughter mm-hmm. refuses to uh, smoke cigars. Well, that's uh, family, though. So what about yeah. friends, people that you choose? Uh, to you be know what? All my guy friends smoke. Uh, not a lot of their wives smoke. Uh, matter of fact, only at, if you look at my group of friends or there's maybe 10 couples about uh, two of the the wives smoke cigars and the other way don't smoke cigars and only one doesn't enjoy getting around cigars at all the other like, like my wife loves the aroma of the cigars but she doesn't partake in smoking cigars yeah yeah i mean i would say that most of my friends actively smoke or are willing to and yeah, yeah I, I mean i this- literally don't have any close friends that don't smoke cigars to some degree some more than others but you know it's just celebratory yeah sometimes. but yeah I mean, your wife uh sean your wife has it, no. she ever smoking a cigar no your no, wife no my wife uh, tried one flavor didn't enjoy it yeah okay, so yeah. yeah well and that's fine you know you never want to push something on someone no no every yeah yeah but the thing about like susan or sarah it's that they might not smoke cigars actively but you can also smoke kind of whenever and wherever you want it doesn't bother them yeah you know so maybe they're not participating with you but they're also not saying oh no rick you can't smoke in our vicinity Uh, there's only one cigar that if i don't want susan and the garage with me 
I like that cigar. I, I know the aroma of that cigar will chase her away. It's a Series R Maduro. Whatever reason, when she smells that cigar, I don't like that. It's spongy. When you're done with that, I'll uh, come back. Any yeah. other cigar, she has no problem with. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. And to yeah. circle back to that question slash comment, you know, the segment of women smokers is definitely growing and we see that yes. more and more often. So yes. mm-hmm. um, also we had uh, Pete just come on and say hi from Metro in New Jersey. So I love him. Love Pete, him. Yes. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Um, love that guy. So to kind of kick off this segment now that we're, you know, probably like 20 minutes in and have not even breached the subject. We're not that far. <laughs> yeah. um, so would you rather smoke a cigar and sit down and watch a movie or listen to an album? Listen to an album. Listen to music. It's now, would that get... change if you were by yourself or with a group of people? Yes, 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 yes. Uh, I would watch a movie, smoking a cigar, but if I would, in the garage, when I get my guys in the garage, it's hard to watch a movie because everybody wants to talk and share and all that, so it's quiet time. So, yes, uh, I agree with you. Uh, music, when we're just uh, the group of guys mm-hmm. uh, alone, I will smoke a cigar. Okay. Yeah, I mean, John? I, I guess overall it, it, it's it's music. It's it's a uh, on occasion. I mean, I'm, I'm out like now. I mean, I may watch a movie outside, but that's it's rare that I watch a movie outside. You know, I agree. Um, I agree. It, it, it'd be more uh, more common at sports or 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 it would be yeah. music and something yeah. like that. So okay. See, Rick, I would be opposite of you. I mm-hmm. hate if I'm listening. Like if I want to actually sit down and listen to music, if I just have background mm-hmm. music, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. But if yeah. I want to really sit down and pay attention to an album and people start talking, I'm like, shut up. Okay. <laughs> I'm okay. listening yeah. to music. Whereas yeah. a movie, I'm, I find myself being less into movies or TV shows than I do being into music. So I would mm-hmm. rather sit down. And if people are yakking during a movie, it might be annoying, but I can get over it. But if I want to sit and actually listen to an album, I don't want people talking at me. So I would probably do music on my own and a movie as a group. Interesting. Uh, the only show that I missed out on the opportunity to share a cigar and watch something was the, uh, the Sopranos. That was so big and so popular in mm-hmm. cigar shops and all that. I didn't do it. I love this show. I was watching you, with you, my you wife. You a Soprano cigar. Yeah, I mean, you obviously yeah, because some you know that you know what? Yeah, yeah, but uh, that's uh, after the TV show. That was after. Huh. So when they made that cigar, uh, what made that a cigar popular, and they can see increased sales on that Saturday because everybody wanted a cigar to smoke with their friends on that sa- uh, Sunday. Interesting. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. But I, 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 I movie wise, I think a great movie that I would love to watch with you uh, two guys. And smoke a cigar would be the Godfather. Okay. I think that would be a perfect cigar for us to sit down because we all saw it, you know, thirty times. Uh, so you could talk and uh, watch it, that part. That oh, it's quiet. It's a great part. It's, this is a part that's going to kill the guy, drop so, the gun, and take the uh, donuts. Uh, not wait, the donuts. Rick, bear in mind, we, we, we're a bit older than Laurel. I'm assuming Laurel has seen the Godfather. Yeah. Okay. I have. I have. I mean, all, once. All them? Once? Yeah. Once? Once. Wow. Okay. Mm. Wow. <laughs> it's a, it's, okay. it's, it's a wow. generational Ooh. thing. It's, it's, it's yeah, but uh, that movie could help you in your life. Uh, the way they deal with people, the, the, the lessons you learn about life and how to deal with family and enemies. And it's amazing. So what was the first time, if you remember, Mm -hmm. seeing cigars in pop culture, whether it be reading an interview, you know, about Winston Churchill or watching a movie or reading a book or something? Is there a time that you remember seeing it in the media and being like, oh, that's interesting. Like, did it did did it have any impact on you? Hmm. You know, maybe was it The Godfather? Was it The Sopranos? For me, it was 
when I was, you know, in school, it was mm-hmm. history books with Winston Churchill. And then mm-hmm. in um, just sort of recreational media, it was a book for young adults. I don't know, uh, similar to like what Jody Peacolt would write for like, you know, just like lighthearted sort of right. preteen stories or whatever. And I remember um, reading it and talking about like this man with a cigar. And I was really young when I was reading it. I think I was maybe only like seven or eight. And I pronounced it cigar. And my mom just cracked up because I had never had to like read it contextually and she still brings it up to this day she's like oh remember when you couldn't even pronounce the word when you were like seven and now you work for a cigar company well you were seven so yeah, 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 yeah. I think my my, I, my uh, earliest and probably most consistent recollection of cigars uh, from a pop culture standpoint there was always some old guy in the neighborhood chewing on mm-hmm. a, you know right, a white right. owl or something like that but Mm-hmm. I guess from a, from a pop cultural or entertainment uh, standpoint, it was probably George Burns. Like he, 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 anytime I saw him on television, he had a cigar. So okay. Probably- yeah, but when that I saw that in Winston smoking, I was not into the cigar, so I, I wasn't kind into of, it. No, yeah, 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 I just kind of bypassed it. To me, the first time I was into uh, into smoking cigars, and I watched Arnold doing a movie uh whatever movie and he lit up a cigar and that okay. like that's kind of neat yeah this figure that i love it is predator. now mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and i yeah, would argue so. that he's still one of the few prominent figures that actively posts with cigars right even right, now. right right right, well, right. You know, like michael, michael jordan yeah michael and uh uh, uh rocky um uh, uh uh sylvester Stallone. Stallone? yeah I mean, most of the guys that are into cigars, from a celebrity standpoint, they post with cigars. I mean, most of them that actually are, are really into cigars, um, near as I can tell. Yeah. yeah. So I kind of wanted to get your opinion on the Cigar Aficionado cover with Nick Jonas, because mm-hmm. when I saw it, it was interesting to me because it wasn't the typical face that Cigar Aficionado puts out there for celebrities on their covers. And at first I was like, oh, really Nick Jonas? But then I was like, you know, that's kind of cool because he's a completely different generation from most of the people featured on the covers. And he caught a lot of backlash from his fans for being there, but he's always been a big cigar lover. He, his dream, I mean, he's Nick Jonas. He can kind of like, you know, dream big, but his dream was to be on the cover of Cigar Aficionado, which I personally find very very cool yeah, right, and right. so i just i thought it was my first reaction was oh weird choice and then kind of opening up to like you go nick jonas you you know bringing light to the cigar industry and you know a younger demographic i i, I didn't even get what the, what the hoopla was about it, it didn't strike me either way when i saw that oh, cool, nick jonas i didn't even think like there'd be some debate about you know whether or not he's worthy of the cover or uh, so it, 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 guy. I didn't even, I didn't even, and maybe that's just me being so, so, you know, just totally removed from that particular. Uh, well, and it, it wasn't, I don't know. It wasn't like cigar smokers saying, oh, you don't belong on the cover. It was more of his fans saying, I know, I know. oh I, yeah. I, oh, I, like, I oh, know. you're promoting smoking. Yeah. Yeah. I, it didn't even dawn on me that, that, that would be an issue. Though. Yeah. yeah. I, I couldn't see that because again, you have to realize in, elementary and junior high they group tobacco uh with drugs and alcohol so they've been you know so i can see some of his fans oh my god you're a smoker you know it's kind of like when you see a, a star the first time i remember when i saw britney spears with a cigarette i thought wow okay that is not her image at mm-hmm. all you know so you know, I can see that uh, reaction to that generation. But Side for boy, us, yeah. is that the worst for thing us. you ever caught of Britney Spears? <laughs> no, but that, that's... Uh, 2007 uh, uh, Britney yeah. was a train wreck. Maybe, yeah, maybe <laughs> the, you know, in the ambulance going to the hospital, that's another <laughs> one. But her smoking a cigarette, I thought was, okay, that's going to be something. Mm. Yeah. And so when you started kind of seeing or becoming aware of like cigars in the media and pop culture, like, did you 
see it when you were older, like old enough to be able to smoke a cigar. Like for me, I was very, very young. So it, it wasn't really impactful. I didn't think anything of it. It wasn't like, right. oh, this is interesting. I want to try it. Yeah. No, yeah, I, 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 I just I go back to when I saw somebody smoking it's drinking. You know, I didn't have my first drink in my life until I was 27 years old. Mm -hmm. So it, for me, drinking or smoking, like, I, I'm not into that. So I'll just look past that. But when I got into cigar smoking and everybody, like when I revisit George Burns, that's cool. I can't believe he's actually smoked a cigar on the air and all that. Yeah. So I remember that. And that's true. You didn't have your first drink until you were 27? Yeah. Huh? At my wedding. Huh? The first drink I ever Seriously? had was my wedding. Oh my yes. God. That's I knew that uh, right. I knew that was my future Girl, of happiness is having a drink. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I okay. Seven years wow. old. I didn't have a beer. I didn't taste wine, anything. Remember when I was raised, my father was smart enough to offer me liquor at 10 years old. If you want to have a drink. You can have a drink in, the, in my house. And so the Cuban situation, uh, uh, raising your family, uh, liquor was offered, wine, beer, uh, hard liquor was offered to anybody as a, uh, a child because it, the, in their mindset, if I take that uh, away from them. The mystery away. Uh, exactly. And so I remember, why should I drink? I can drink in my house anytime. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't kind of escaping and kind of secret. So, so, so I'm, I'm sure the statute of limitations has passed on this, but, but I got to share this story. So <laughs> my, my mom, my mom owned a bar called the Gemini third ward. Okay. Really? Okay. Really? From, okay. Right really? from, uh, from, from the Magnolia housing project. So I, when I was a, I guess five, six, um, I, right. I have to go there in the afternoon until my brothers pick me up to bring me home. So I'd be there sitting at the bar while she's prepping the bar, you know, getting ready for the evening crowd. <laughs> and she would always, my, my favorite drink was, was cream, to, cream to banana with milk, like the, the, the banana okay. liqueur. Uh -huh. yeah, 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 yeah. So I'd sip that. When you were five. <laughs> In a bottle? Wait, no, please, please no, no, listen. Yeah, I had like a little a little banana highball when I was five, right? <laughs> no, but, but the worst is the worst is when we would have family get togethers. Do you guys remember the Miller ponies? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Miller highlights. Yes. Yes. yes, yes, yes. We used to sip those when I was a kid. I thought yeah, yeah. I thought when I saw the size, I thought those were kid beers. I was like, these are kid beers. <laughs> That's amazing. And I think about that now, like, like, like can you imagine, like, like uh, Fulton County uh, or, or Cobb County police would like converge on your, you know? But it was never a thing to me. Like, I never like exactly, never exactly. It. it was. Do you have a problem with uh, drinking today? You're not. No, no. no you're no, because I'm, a, that's, I'm not even a drinker. Yeah. I'm a sipper. Yeah. Listen, yeah. I, I, I literally cannot consume alcohol unless I'm having right. a cigar. Like, I can't I just agree. drink to drink. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah, I, I I I literally only consume alcohol to complement my cigar. That's it. I agree. I agree. Fair enough. Yep. Fair enough. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we have a question about: Is there any particular celebrity you associate with cigars? So, Sean, right off the bat, don't even think about it. First name that comes to mind. Probably Michael Jordan. Okay. Arnold for me. Arnold was my answer too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember uh, I met Arnold when we uh, was launching uh, the uh, Flathead, and I remember uh, he was at the end of the day at the uh, sell show. Uh, everybody left. Uh, all the uh, you know shop owners left, and so we're kind of breaking down in our night. And all of a sudden, there was a group of people, and it was Arnold, and he came to our booth. And uh, he, he says, everybody's trying to hand him a cigar. So, and every cigar they, they were handing him was a small ring gauge. Mm -hmm. And he said, do you have anything larger? And I ran and had one box of seven by 70. And I give him uh, uh, two of those. And he looked at me and uh, he says, thank you so much. I enjoyed this cigar tonight. That's and awesome. So, yeah. So that was the, my kind of 
touch with fame kind of mm -hmm. uh, situation. But I Can have I a great you, picture. Yep. We gave a consigliere to, um, oh my God, Bill Murray, and he loved it. Really? Mm -hmm. nice. Where do you? Uh, at you the Pebble, our, Pebble Beach Pro Am. Really? Mm -hmm. Is he cool? Yeah. Because I, we, are, you, he well, was cool. we, I mean, yeah, he was, he he's not like overly talkative. Okay. Um, I think he's just at this point, like, kind of over crowds and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, he's so cool and iconic. Everybody wants to talk to him and I get it. Right. So, like, he's nice. He's friendly. He, you know, he's jovial, but he's not necessarily like oh find yourself in like a corner being able to have a conversation with them right 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 so yeah um do you think if you know in regards to like movies or television shows or music it makes sense to put the thought and care into pairing a particular cigar and pairing a particular movie or album as it does like pairing a drink or food or is it a totally different entity no i think i think absolutely you would want to pair a, a, a certain cigar or a certain brand even with a certain movie certain movies i think i think so yeah uh i'm kind of opposite um don't you know uh the cigar i'm smoking again the only cigar i would pair with a movie are, are sopranos uh i would oh, do wait, that wait, wait. i must yeah. have confused the question i was thinking like not like me if i'm watching a movie i want to get a certain cigar i thought you meant like if if yeah, Sean, I didn't. No, you answered. You're good. Like you understood it. I'm not saying Rick that you didn't, but yeah, the whole connotation was that. Would well, you? Really put... Rick didn't. I mean, <laughs> no, I think. Call Rick me out. Took... I don't care. Call no, me out. Yeah. <laughs> I think you just took it a different direction where you said, "No, I would only pair it with the Sopranos. I wouldn't put care into saying I'm going to choose this cigar with this movie or this smoke with this album. I would not." put thought into it unless I'm watching The Sopranos, correct? Exactly. So exactly. Sean, your answer was right. I mean, like you answered- I'm thinking properly. like if someone is saying, if they come to to, 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 to STG or General, General Cigar and say, hey, we're doing this movie. This is the, the, the theme and the plot of the movie. We'd like to place a cigar in- Oh, that's scene. totally different. I yeah, I agree with that. Yes. If that's the, uh, the way your question is, I agree with you. I would not uh, put in hand a, uh, you know, a mild Columbia when the guy is a kick-ass, you know, taking over the world, here's smoking this cigar, you know, mm -hmm. so I, I agree with that. So, yeah, I guess then, Rick, you, Sean, that was not the question, but it's a very, no, in no but that's a very interesting way to take it. Um, I was more just wondering, like, if, you know, for you liking Earth, Wind, and Fire, if you're going to sit down and listen to an album, and would you say, oh, because based on this album, or whether it be the length or the feel of it, or yeah. any other mm -hmm. factors, is there like a particular cigar that you think like, I, this would be enjoyable to smoke while listening to this album because of X, Y, and Z? So yeah, music is different. And, and, and it's rare that I listen to an album. The last album or, or, mm -hmm. or LP mm -hmm. that I listened to from cover to cover uh, yeah. from start to finish was, was Dua Lipa's uh, album. Okay. Um, but usually I'm listening to, you know, a mix of different stuff. Even if it's a particular artist, it's not going to be one album from that artist. So, mm -hmm. so it's kind of hard to say, hey, I'm, you know, I'm in the mood for this cigar to listen to. That, that's, that's kind of, um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. That so that's, that's a great question, uh, uh, Laurel. Uh, what album in your lifetime is your favorite album to listen to? And that is an album I'm going to, that is from cover to finish. You, you know, know it, it's hard. It's an interesting question because my favorite albums aren't necessarily from my favorite artists. Okay. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. you yeah. can like individual songs or artists, whereas like super tramps crime of the century. I think that is one of the greatest albums ever created. More modern, um, El Cam or Camino by um, the Black Keys. Fantastic okay. album. Mm -hmm. And I, so I don't know, it's hard because like I said, there's certain. Mm, if I had to go wish away you were, from wish that. Wish You Were Here yeah. would be one of my top five. Yeah. Who's that? Wish You Were Here. 
think for it. Uh, for me, it would be uh, Elgin, uh, Elgin John's Yellow Brick Road. Uh, to yes. me, that is just a storytelling album from song to song to song. It doesn't play like, uh, you know, Pink Floyd. It's a story, mm -hmm. beginning and finish. But the story inside the album, every song has their own story. Yes. And uh, the other, uh, it's just it's amazing to me. I was just listening to that album last night. And what a phenomenal and... opening, Funeral for a Friend. Oh, I mean, bro, it's oh just my amazing. God. It's just amazing. And some and of some his of the... other stuff, like his... Don't shoot me. I'm only the piano player. Yeah, yeah, They're more yeah. like poppy campy, you know, yeah, not really yeah. cohesive. Whereas Goodbye Yellow Brick Road is very much that story. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. We have um, somebody asked if we were going to be listening to also great choice, um, Sade or like a smooth jazz, what would we pair mm -hmm. with it? Huh. A jazzy album, I, I, I would go more mellow. Uh, uh, cigar, uh, again, jazz to me is about uh, listening to every instrument. And so a mellow cigar allows me, a mellow to a uh, medium body allows me to experience the full cigar, uh, the wrap or the fillers. Sometimes when you're looking at the full body cigars, is just one note, just one note. And so I, I think a, a more mellow uh, to uh, medium body cigar, I would choose for like, listening to uh, like a jazz. Mm -hmm. Yes, certainly. If I'm listening to Chardet, it's going to be something that, that, yeah. that that's on, on the milder side. Yeah. Know, more nuanced, definitely. And I think. And I can... picked her and I picked her over Whitney when she launched her career. Whitney. Now, Whitney had a better career. But to me, to me, her voice carried the room better than Whitney's voice did. Well, they have a totally different yeah, I style. I mean, yes, Whitney yes, is yes, hitting yes. these like. Yes, like yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. You being one or the other because they're yeah. totally two different vibes. I yeah, mean, yeah, exactly. Yeah. If I want to listen to Sade, like I can get down, like Paradise is one of my absolute favorite songs. Mm -hmm. I love that song. I could listen to it on loop forever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but if I want to listen to that, it's not necessarily the same occasion that I want to listen to Whitney. Whitney. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite song that you listen to that it takes you back? And it's for you that every time you listen, it's fresh. It's fresh. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's Taxi uh, by Harold uh, Chaffin. To me, that song uh, tells Man, that's, me that's about tough. my life. Yeah. One yeah. song. Oof. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know they have, uh, man. Yeah. That's tough. Uh, like yeah. when you say fresh, like every time you hear it, it's just as good as the first time. I, I, that I, I, I don't care if I hear that song in the middle, the end, the beginning. I'm going to stop and I'm going to listen to this out. If I, 99% of the time, even my favorite song, if I catch that song halfway, to, I'll change the channel. But mm -hmm. that song, it's like, like that TV, that movie that I don't care where you come into. Uh, you got my attention for that last hour, half an hour or two hours. I don't care. Hmm. Listen to that song. It's very sad uh, because he's just a taxi guy. He's just trying to get high, get I through the I mean, world. I can't, I can't come up with a song. like Feeling I, good, yeah. Nina Simone. I need to revisit that. Uh, yeah. But no, but that is like, yes, it's a great song. It's a well-known song, but that's a song that regardless of what I'm doing, it doesn't matter who I'm with, where I am. If it comes on, it's like, stop everything. And right, listen right, right. To it. Yeah. Yeah. I love songs that are sad or a sad story, but mm -hmm. it makes me happy. Mm -hmm. I don't know. You know, it's kind of yeah. strange. Yeah. Does, so do you find like, sorry, Sean, have you, you have an answer? Do you want time to think about it? Way. Um, someday we'll all be free. Something about okay. that song just okay. the, the changes the way it starts. And and uh, and then in, in hearing that song, just thinking how much of a tormented soul that, that you know, troubled person he was. I mean, you know, um, so that song always takes me somewhere, but, but it, it's hard to come up with one song, you know? 
So, uh, Sean, my question to you is Billie Holiday. Uh, I've never got into her, but uh, I know uh, she bled every word, every sound out of her soul. Uh, You agree? Uh, Where do you place her as far Um, as just a a singer, the storyteller, and the tragedies of our life? Yeah, so, so, and I don't pretend to be you know, an expert on, on right, Billie right. Holiday. Um, uh, certainly, you know, I, 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 my appreciation for her, um, aside from obviously what, what she did, you know, with, with her capsule in time and, 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 and how similar she was to, um, you know, that era and, 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 and nothing is more evident to, you know, than to see who she affected, uh, uh, you know, later in life. I mean, the short days of the world. Erica Badu was the, right. you know, I mean, there were so many artists that were Jill Scott that would come after her that were that, that she's a tree that uh, all these guys yeah, branch yeah, out yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, you know, there, 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 there were none before her, but, but many after. Yeah, know? yeah, so, exactly. Um, yeah, exactly. And, and, yeah. yeah. And, and, and that's rare, you know, that's rare that you see, you, you, you can hear this person says, wow, that's, that's Billy Holiday. Influence. I mean, it's like Chuck yeah. Berry. I mean, Chuck Berry oh. was the, yeah, yeah. yeah paved the way for rock and roll and yes, people yes, what yes, they're hearing yes. today has been influenced you know yeah. 10 times over you know because they're sampling from this artist who sampled from them then 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 but it all stems back to chuck berry he changed the way and it's, you perform you yeah. perform yeah. because all the all these guys were standing singing and chuck berry said i need to let go let's <laughs> go you know like you know uh, James Brown, uh, you can't understand half of the, what he's thinking about, but you can feel the passion coming out the way he presented that song. Yeah. And in, in the 70s, when we had, you know, this influx of like the, you know, the British invasion, Chuck Berry, Elvis, very limitedly like Muddy or Holland Wolf were really some of the only music to cross borders so like chuck berry and elvis like that's what a lot of these artists were hearing well yeah that was the the, the first influences obviously i mean the rolling Mm -hmm. stones are literally named after a muddy waters song right 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 right, right, some of the earliest recordings were at chess records so 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 they were 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 uniquely influenced by by you know um the early rock artists and Mm -hmm. the blues and then around that same time you know Heading east across the pond was the Motown sound, but 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 what came from Europe initially, and, and it would take you know Eric Clapton would kind of talk about how he learned how to play guitar um, by studying Chuck Berry. So 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 clearly the, the British yeah. invasion was, was 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 influenced more so by by like as you mentioned uh, Chuck Berry and and blues music than it was mm-hmm. by Motown because those two phenomena sort of you know crossed each other yeah. uh, across the Atlantic. Absolutely. Well, in the Rolling Stones, it was interesting because wasn't it you know, like blues in the United States had started to wane and then the Rolling Stones came and they were doing all covers before they started really producing original music. And they brought blues kind of back to prominence. Like we saw a resurgence of it because of the Rolling Stones, but they were covering Muddy. Yeah, so mm-hmm. it's just, it's interesting. Thank God. They so, if you, right? uh, so if you had the uh, opportunity to smoke in time, in, in the time, with one artist and don't worry about it. He's going to smoke a cigar. Who would you smoke that cigar with? Who would be that guy? You can pick anybody from Mozart to today. Uh, anybody. Uh, I, to me, Cat Stevens would be that guy that I would want to pick his brain because okay. he, he left the music industry at the peak and said, this is bullshit. This is not life. This is not what I wanted to live. It's about family. It's about friends. It's about helping the world. I'm at, out of here. I'm out of here. To do that, it's like me at the peak of my career. Say, so guys, I'm out of here. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just because this is not driving my soul where I want to go. It's about friends and family and all that. So to me, Cat Stevens. Uh, being able to walk away for millions and millions and millions of dollars a year, you know, bro, it's not what it's uh, about. Hmm. So, Laurel? 
Yeah, I'm thinking. I don't know. Sean, what about you? Um, mine would either be Maurice White or, or, or Marvin Gaye. Okay. Oh, fuck. Yeah, Marvin would be. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. Do we not need Marvin Gaye today? Oh, God. Yeah. Could you realize what songs that he can write and sing to help us get through this mm-hmm. bullshit we're living right now? Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. I mean, his songs are timeless, but you wonder that about artists who pass early. You're like, God, could you imagine if you were still yeah. making music today? Yeah. But oh, good, for me, probably. Barbara Streisand. No. <laughs> Liza Minnelli. <laughs> no, probably. My first inclination was to say Bowie. Huh. All right. I can do it. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. I don't know. I, I want to say Eric Clapton, but he, he also seems very reserved. Like, I don't think. He's, he, he's just very much to himself. Like he wants to make the music, but he doesn't want the fame. So I don't know if he'd be like the best person to smoke a cigar. He literally on. made a song called Fame. Uh, so. right. No, no, no. I'm talking about that's Clapton. That's, that's, yeah. Oh, oh. That's, that's <laughs> Bowie. Okay. But Bowie, uh, what I loved about him, he's changed his image three times. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of hard to do and be successful well, yeah, every successful. time you change your image. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just very bold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, do movies or music like do either of them have more of an emotional impact on you? Like, I'm not really a crier at movies, but like certain songs, not so much because they're sad, but because I just find them to be like so powerful or moving, mm-hmm. will sometimes make me emotional. Depending on what I'm trying to do, uh, mm-hmm. where I'm trying to go. Uh, uh, music is number one for me. I've never cried to a song, maybe Butterfly Kisses, because I remember that is a song that Sarah said to me, I, I want to dance with you at my wedding with the song. Listen mm-hmm. to this song, Dad, and I'm, you know, <laughs> cheering up and crying. But uh, movies, I, oh, I am a, a huge crier. Okay. I'm very emotional. So movies will tug on the tears. Uh, more, but uh, the heart would be more to music. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm not a huge crier at movies right. uh, or, 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 or as a result of movies, but I, I, I can't think of any song um, that's kind of, you know, brought me to the point of, you yeah. know, tears. Yeah. <clears throat> and I think it just depends <clears throat> on the mood or you yeah, know, yeah, the state sure. you're in but there's just there's some songs or some music it's just you listen to you're like god this is just incredible alex will kill me for telling you guys this in a public right. forum right <laughs> we're all parents and family <laughs> here, so <laughs> yeah he walked away somewhere so i don't know um <laughs> we went to um elton back in november in philadelphia and he opened rocket man with like a 20 minute piano solo wow. and it was incredible and i look over and i see kind of like a <laughs> you know from alex next to me is like oh, did it move wow. you <laughs> and it's just it's stuff like that where you're in the moment you're like it's just it was so good and it was just the right time to be you know right. listening to this and uh, so because I am like a blubbering idiot sometimes with music. I am. He, and I he am. makes fun of well, me. Not and so I was like, oh, oh, is that so? <laughs> but uh, I, I give you one more dogging downer. Uh, when I had my stroke and uh, kind of recoup about uh, eight months later, nine months later, uh, Susan and Sarah and uh, me went to the killers. And there's a song about overcoming something. And I remember, bro, I'm going to choke up right now. I remember looking at Susan and Sarah and the three of us were crying that not only that I was able to be there, Mm -hmm. uh, that was singing my families together. And that was very emotional there. You can see it. You can hear in my voice. And that really, and it was a great concert, very fun. That one song just took us and we just 
kind of that moment realized I'm here. Mm -hmm. I've survived. And that was to me, one of my favorite memories of my family forever, forever and ever. So, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Music can can, really just transport you like that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, that was uh, one that, uh, you know, I was happy. I mean, I think snot bubbles, everything is coming out, but I don't care. This is life and I'm with my family and we're going to sing the cigar uh, songs together and we're going to have a good time. Yeah. And yeah. your birthday is coming up here. Yeah. We don't miss in that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'll get you in 70 when I approach 70. So uh, I, I've always celebrated the, the decades. I'm not a big fan of birthdays. At no, but I thought your your October birthday was coming up. Yes, uh, October the 13th. It would mm-hmm. be uh, 14 years. Mm-hmm. 14 years. It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. But you know, that's for another show. Yeah. Yeah. That so, journey. Yeah. Is there any like movie you guys have watched recently that just kind of made you think or kind of spoke to you i just i watched parasite the other day for the first time and it i don't know if you guys have seen it the ending is gutting (laughs) and it was just so poignant in all the best ways and Mm -hmm. that was the first movie i've seen in quite some time where i was like Huh. It won a lot of awards. And part of the reason, like if there's, you know, categories that I'm, I don't really put that much value in like award shows, but sometimes if I see winners or whatever, I'm like, okay, well, it might be a, a good movie to, you know, worth watching. And I, you know, picked it up one day and just watched it by myself. And I was like, damn, this mm-hmm. is heavy, but it was good. There's so many movies that uh, touched me. And so it's hard, you know, even uh, something really insightful lately, it's just been kind of yeah. like action stuff or whatever. Yeah, just I agree. Escapism. I agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. yeah. I'm trying to think, what uh, what have I seen? I was really. Oh, wait a minute. No. Um, what was the name of this movie, man? With um, Charlize Theron. Um, God, what was the name of this movie? It's where they're um, they like they don't die. Um, they're reg. They they look like regular people, but they been around oh, I forgot the name of this movie it's so good um they get killed in battle and they've been out like at every major battle in the world over the <clears> last <throat> you know thousand years almost um god I gotta think of the name of this movie it was it was the, the plot was really good uh, and it really tied in these these these, these points in history um <clears throat> and it was action and I, I didn't really expect much of it to be honest just I think it was on Netflix and I just got but it was one of the best movies I've seen in a while for me as far as the sort of an action flick. Yeah. You remember that movie, uh, share it with us and uh, I would definitely watch it. I, I, yeah, I, I'm going to sure. have to find it now. I'm going to have to find it. Yeah. So it, it was, it was very, very good. Hold now, if you, if you guys, I can hear you guys. A, uh, if you guys could do like a cigar, a cigar collaboration. Now, Sean, luckily this was before your time with Jay-Z, but if you could do a, a cigar collab with any celebrity, who would it be and why? And then like, huh. what sort of unique to their craft way would you have them promote it? So if you chose an artist, would they like write a song and include the name or something? Or would they, you know, I don't know, smoke it while acting in a movie. So like, who would you do a collaboration with and how would you use them in a unique way to promote it? You, you, you probably should have like given me this. Uh, yeah. It's a question this before. So that's yeah. super interesting because I feel like I have sent these to you guys ahead of time. Oh, you did. Huh. You did. Huh. That's an uh, email three months ago. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Oh. Uh, fans wise, the one that I met, uh, uh, movie star, uh, right, you know, uh, Usher to me was. That guy was such a sweet, sweet soul. Uh, uh, Usher. Uh, oh, Usher. I remember meeting him twice. And uh, the second time, he knew my name. Uh, I was taken, the fact he remembered my name, because it's six months after I met him the first time. And then uh, he said to me, how's your wife, Susan? You know, he, so he has the, uh, the ability to hear a name and remember that name and 
connect with the uh, the fan. So uh, I, I was taken. So I would love to do something with uh, Usher. Okay. And then is there any like crazy way you'd have him promote it? Like, you know. I just want to see him dance, uh, sing that song with a cigar. Okay. And a, a tux and, uh, you know, a red hat, you know. So, but, uh, but I, I, you know, I think uh, Usher, what I was, I would love to see how we will react. And doing a song, dancing with a cigar in his hand, and I, I guarantee he can pull it off. I should. Okay. How about you, Laura? I don't know. I wish I had the questions ahead of time so I could have, uh, <laughs> you know, formulated an answer. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. you. Know, I think I, I think love uh, you. one of my favorite actors. Uh, there's a couple. I mean, you know, Denzel is obviously Denzel. Um, you know, probably one of my all times, but uh, also, and I've seen him in a number of different roles, both comedic, some, uh, you know, cameos, he really lights up, uh, feature films, tragedy, all over the board, uh, even sports films, and, and he's just like, I've never met him, but he seems like he's just like a, a down to earth, like, you know, straight easy to talk to guy and, and and I think he'd be kind of cool to, to fit in any role. M Matthew McConaughey. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That would be cool. He seems Actor like a wise, very genuine person. Yes. Too. Yes. Yes. Actor wise, I would uh, say Jeff Bridges. Mm, uh, good choice. Good I choice. I would love to uh, have that. him smoking a cigar in a movie. The dude. The dude. Instead yeah. of ordering the white Russian. No. What do you call Russian. it? It was a white Russian. Called it. Really? Yeah. I think he in, called it something. In Big Lebowski? Oh, yeah, I think he called it something else. Because I, I know the Drake, but I think he referred to that Drake as something else. Anybody is listening to I don't us? think he Help did. Us. I think he did refer to it as white Russian. Hey. Nope. Oh, no. I was trying to. Um, in uh, the Big Lebowski, Jeff Bridges referred to the drink as a white Russian, right? Or did it have like a weird name? Okay, yeah, white Russian. Movie guru over here just to answer to the so, question. Uh, right. Thank you so much. Get back to making <laughs> martinis. <laughs> Rick says get back to making martinis. Um, my answer would probably be, I don't know. Uh, like, music I think it would, and movie. Oh, music and movie. So if yeah. I had to pick like, I guess it's hard to say actor, but John Mulaney. I think he would be just a fun person to do a cigar collab with because he Who's just that? does like, he's a stand up comedian. Um, he was a writer for SNL and now he has his own okay. like Netflix specials. He just seems okay. like a very fun, genuine guy. And I would have him do like a whole stand up bit about cigars. <laughs> so I don't know. And then as far as like an artist goes, mm -hmm. Mm, I don't know. Dude, can you stop? Is that your dog? Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to, you know, toss this one around in the brain grapes for a second. But we had somebody asking, what is our guilty pleasure song? Or I will add, or artist. You oh. know, like a band. Or like, what's what's your guilty pleasure? Guilty mine, used pleasure? To be, mine used to be ABBA, but I'm not guilty about that anymore. I put ABBA? it all, I put it all out there. What's, what's guilty about that? I don't know. I, uh, like I would say the Bee Gees for me. Oh my God, they are not a guilty pleasure. The Bee Gees are incredibly talented. You don't want to mention that in the group of guys that you're you're really? about to listen to the Bee Gees. The problem yeah. with the Bee Gees is that anybody who hears the Bee Gees who doesn't actually know what their music is, they instantly think of Saturday Night Fever, and all they mm -hmm. think is like poppy, campy disco music. The Bee Gees are talented. Oh yeah, the Bee Gees. They're the yeah, best yeah, writers. Yeah, yeah, one of the best writers uh, uh, in the history of writing music. Who would be my guilty pleasure music or, or, or artist? Tom Jones. I just think of you as Tom Jones. I mean, I like Tom Jones. What new it puts a cat? <laughs> What's new pussy cat? Whoa! No, I don't know, uh, bro. You, you got to tell it. Hey guys, I want to tell you. Here, the thing. every night Sean gets ready for a bit, he throws that on the music uh, and he listens to that. 
Let's new Pistacat, and then he does that's, that's, that's his that's event. Well, guilty pleasure. I'm thinking it, it'd be somebody that that I listen to that people would be surprised, like, "Wow, you listen to them?" Like, you don't want to let people know you like. Hmm. Uh, George Michael's too. Okay, again, George Michael is a very talented artist. Again, know your uh, room. <laughs> if I announce to these guys in my garage that I'm going to go, well, he's, you know, I was going to go see George Michael's concert. They would just strip me of my man cave. I got it. And, and this may not be a big deal for you guys, but I would venture to guess that most people that know me don't know that there's a certain group that I like. Okay. okay? Dan and Shetty. Crickets. Who? Country group, Dan and Shay. Never mm. heard of them. No. Never heard of them. Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm not a country music fan overall. I'm not so either. I so I wouldn't say that's like a guilty pleasure of mine just because I'm not really into it. Well, this is, I mean, this, yeah. you know, it's, it's just something yeah. so out of, out of sorts. But we could yeah, yeah. thank Matt Bender for this. I was, maybe the first or second time I was working. He listens to nothing but country music. Yeah, so, he does. He does. Know, it's a, after hours, a and kid hours from a, uh, start, Chicago, start something like, okay, well, this one is not. This one doesn't <laughs> suck as bad. This one isn't as. And then I heard <laughs> one. I was like, wow, this is actually pretty good. Like, Who is this? And he told me, and and I started researching him, and I realized that I like a lot. So they're like legit in my my uh, my playlist, and and I'll play Dan and Shay like, and just kind of you know chill out every now and then. That's a me. great question. Okay. I'm going to ask you guys. Uh, Hold on, uh, I have to answer mine. Uh, so, oh, you go, 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 and I'll answer, ask you the right. question. I, you know, no shame, no shame. I used to like them when I was a kid, and then I grew out of them, and I was too cool. But now they're making a comeback, and I forgot how much their music is just crazy earworms. The it's, Spice Girls. The Spice Girls. What? Really? Yep. Really? <laughs> Absolutely. No shame. Okay. <laughs> that, that, I, th I, I think she won this segment with that. That's yeah, yeah, you, you, you did. I would never, never mm -hmm. mention that again. No, mm -hmm. I don't care. You know, yeah, yeah. come at me. <laughs> yeah, spice up your life. You It'll, that sh that shit will be stuck in your head forever. <laughs> wow, wow! It's almost uh, made me forget the question I was going to ask you. That was so. <laughs> Uh, yeah, she won. Hey, Rick, she won this round. She, yeah. she won. Point, point for Laurel. Perfect. If you all right, so uh, my question to you, uh, uh, talking about Matt, uh, name your top one or three favorite reps to no. work with. No. Yeah, you can't. You, I no. re really. No. Uh, okay, I'll start. I'll start. <laughs> I'll start. I don't care because if you're not in the top three list, you need to pick up your game. Okay. I mean, I know who your top three are, but I'll tell you if I was right. All right. Romney, Matt, and Nick. Oh, I was wrong. I'm sorry, Jonathan. I thought you were going to put else. Jonathan in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, because he's talking so much, you know, you know. Uh, to on, the, on the fantasy, yeah, oh my god, so. that fantasy yeah. chat, dude! You guys, last <laughs> night I flip, I turned my phone volume off, and it got so bad that I had to flip my phone over. I had like 130 notifications this morning because of that freaking fantasy chat. And they, and they were asking me why I wasn't talking crap. I was like, I'm playing, I'm playing Laura. I'm not going to talk crap to Laura. <laughs> Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Okay, Such if you general. guys could, as we wrap up here, if you could smoke a cigar with any boy band. Now, keep in mind, Led Zeppelin was technically a boy band. If you could smoke a cigar with any boy band, who would it be? From any point in history. You go, you roll up, you have a box of cigars, you give them all one cigar, and what would that cigar be? All right, so for me, uh, uh, Timberlake, what, what's a band? NSYNC. NSYNC. Okay, that, that uh, so guy. So you think he's shit about the Spice Girls, but you're talking about NSYNC? <laughs> he... Well, I mean, they gave us... Justin Timberlake. Bro, so. yeah. exactly. One oh, of the man. funniest guys ever, ever. Well, and, and Justin Timberlake and the Chris Stapleton collabs, amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, and I would share with him uh, the uh, Amazon Basin. Okay. Yeah. For me, it would be probably New Edition. Bobby Brown and 
Ricky Bell and Johnny Gill and Ralph Tresman. Okay. Ronnie DeVoe and uh, probably do a Royale because that that's a uh, that's the, the the new hot thing now and um, yep. top of mind. So I think they they dig it if they smoke cigars. Okay. Bro, I want to see your dog. Can you lower your camera? I want to sure. see your dog. Where? It's got some. Uh... Oh. Oh. oh, bro! What a beautiful. She or him? It's a he. And, and his name? name? What's the name of Superman's dog? Nobody knows this. Mm, no. Crypto, what? like the planet Krypton. Oh. Crypto with the K. Now, in full disclosure, oh. he was a rescue, and that's the name he came with, because I wouldn't have named the damn dog Crypto. <laughs> when they told me his name was Crypto, I was like, the currency? And he's like, no, I like Superman's dog. Like, I was a stupid one. I was like, who, who does Superman <laughs> have a dog? What are we talking about? So, well, I mean, it's not the worst name. When we adopted our cat, his name was Tinsel. And I was like, oh my God, no. <laughs> I just heard from a guy that uh, rescues dogs. A dog, you can call a dog a new name and he'll pick up the new name in less than three days. I wish I had known that. Because... Really? <laughs> yes. So the next rescue <laughs> you have, you can uh, rename them. That's mm. good to know. Okay, and as we end here, because we're at our hour, we just want to say okay. thank you to everybody for joining. And our final question is, would you rather have to watch only holiday movies or listen to music only on a staticky radio station? Listen to music on a static, a staticky radio station. Um, I'm a sucker for Christmas, so. <laughs> Fair enough. Forever? Would, yeah. Did you listen to Christmas For, music? Yep, yeah, forever. forever. You could only l watch holiday movies or you could only listen to music on a static -y station. I, I'll pick the movie. But if you get the movies, then you can listen to normal music. And if you pick the music, you can watch normal music movies. Yeah. Music, movie. I love uh, movies. So. Yeah. So this was fun. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you guys all for participating. Uh, so, hold on. What's no. next week topic hey, hey, so hey, we can hey, get ready? <laughs> um, right next week's topic <laughs> is about travel. Okay, perfect. So again, it's on the list that I sent you all weeks ago. The questions have not changed. <laughs> can, 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 you, can you resend, resend, can I resend that? that? <laughs> Rick, I was cursing your name because Jen had sent the email that was like, hey, you guys, I sent an email. So this link is at the top of the inbox. And then like five minutes later, Rick's like, can you send me this link? Yeah, yeah. I yeah. liked it. Yeah. It, it, it never, I'm it the old guy. Me, the yeah. only what? one that works for me is the one she sent weeks and weeks ago. So I have to go back and find that one. Mm. I just flagged the one she sent us a couple of weeks ago that had all of the, the dates and is the link. Oh, okay. Am I frozen? Uh, send that uh, to me too. <laughs> okay, I'll get. Right, I will guys. get right on that. I love you guys. Uh, see you soon, and uh, well, and Rick, hopefully I'll see you. Rick, I'm kicking your ass this week. He got. You got to. Uh, you got to be uh, kidding me. Okay, uh, bring it on, big boy. Bring it on, because all I want to do is beat you, uh, Laurel and Gary. Two down, one to go. Not happening. You didn't include Gary on your list. You I know Gary's. Uh, yeah, yeah, Gary? I did. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, did you? Yeah. Are they yeah, said Rami? Yeah. Oh, all right. No, uh, no. Uh, work it. No, Gary's the the worst to work with. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, guys. Oh, I yeah. love you. Have Take care, one. and uh, I'll see you next week. See you guys. Without thank this you shirt. all. <laughs> Creamsicle. Later. <laughs> uh.